Hello and welcome to the video. This is one that I've been really looking forward to making and it's about one of the most underrated plugins in FL Studio, which is the Fruity Convolver plugin. It can act as a fantastic reverb, giving you access to some incredible real acoustic spaces and some incredible sampled hardware reverbs. But most people don't really know about the Fruity Convolver or, or don't really use it and I think I know why. So let's take a look at it. So this here is the Fruity Convolver plugin. You can access it by going to the mixer and on a channel that you want to load it, simply uh, select a plugin and it should be at the top of the delay and reverb sections, Fruity Convolver, just above your delays and the beloved Fruity Reverb 2. So when you load it, it looks a bit like this and this is confusing to a beginner. It doesn't really look like a typical reverb plugin. It sort of looks like an audio recorder, a little bit like the Edison. But trust me, uh, although it looks a little bit complicated, it's actually extremely simple. I'm just going to spend about a minute explaining how it works, and then we'll get into some audio examples. You don't really need to know how it works, but it does help you uh, get the sound out of it that you want. So how convolution technology works, view it as sort of like a snapshot of a particular acoustic space or a device. It uses an impulse response to combine the signal that you're using, say you've got a guitar or a vocal that you want to put some reverb on, it uses convolution technology to combine it with an impulse response. Now what is an impulse response? You've got an impulse and a response. So an impulse is like a short sharp signal, a sort of broadband signal. Let's say for instance this is a click, although that's not completely accurate. So this is your impulse. The response is how the acoustic space reacts to that impulse. So if I was in a huge cathedral and I click, the impulse response would sound like this. Whereas if I was in a small sort of tiled bathroom, it would sound a little bit more like this. So that impulse response is simply a recording of a standardized impulse and what it sounds like in different environments. Now the convolution plugin takes your signal, like your vocal, and that impulse response, and it combines them in a special way that makes it sound like your vocal is being sung in that cathedral or in that bathroom. Now, the same thing also applies to rare or expensive hardware units. So you can run an electronic impulse into these and record the output, and it works in exactly the same way, giving you access to incredible hardware units or plate reverbs. And because you're only capturing one snapshot of what that room or device sounds like, and you can't really adjust it, the convolution reverbs have a couple of tools here so that you can control and fine tune the reverb a little bit more. Now that we understand how the technology works, let's just start getting some sounds pulled up and take a listen to what it actually sounds like. So I've got some cello here, which sounds really nice, and I've got the convolution reverb loaded here. So for a start, I'm just gonna turn the wet down and we're just going to listen to what the cello sounds like. That was recorded in my studio right here, uh, where I'm sitting actually, and I want to use an impulse response to make it sound like it was performed in a much larger space. So from the top menu, I'm just going to start by going to the presets, and we have a ton. We have chambers, corridors, exteriors, guitar cabinets, real spaces, reverb devices. So what I'm going to start with is a reverb device, and I'm going to go to this Eventide Cathedral Smooth, which is a well-known hardware reverb. If I just combine some of this wet signal here, we'll hear this cello sounding like it's in a cathedral. And it just sounds completely different to how the algorithmic reverb or the fruity reverb 2 sounds. Now, if I want to choose a different preset, say I choose a uh, bathroom. It sounds really sort of small and horrid. So what I'm going to do is go back to the presets and select that cathedral because I really like the sound of it. So let's take a look at some of the other controls. First things to note are the wet and dry here. So dry. And you use these two controls to blend between your original signal and the reverb. I think we all know how that works. 
So if you had this as an effect send, you might want to turn the dry all the way down. Just along from there, we have this input, and this is the stereo separation of the input signal going into the reverb. If you listen to the dry cello, it's actually going uh, in both headphones. You've got a left signal, a right signal, and a center signal. And what this means is you can control whether the reverb is picking up on that wide signal or whether you want the reverb to be fed a mono signal. So let's take a listen. I'm going to turn the dry down so we can really hear this. So this would be as wide as possible, and then I'll turn it to make it mono. Uh, you won't hear that on like a phone speaker or a laptop, but in, in these headphones, that's a big, big difference. And then on the output, you can change the stereo separation of the uh, output wet signal. which you have to be a bit careful with that. I tend to like keeping it in the middle. Anything else sounds a little bit uh, phasey. Now, because you're only capturing one snapshot, the next four controls are really aimed at giving you a lot more control over the reverb. So the first one is a pre-delay. How much of a difference is there gonna be between the dry signal starting and then you hearing the reverb? I'm actually going to use the drums to demonstrate the pre-delay because it, it just makes a lot more sense. So if I have the delay down, the reverb starts right when the dry signal starts. Just like that. However, if I turn the pre-delay all the way to the top, we have a big uh, delay between the dry signal and the reverb starting. What the pre-delay is particularly useful for is vocals. If the reverb always sounds like it's just on top of the vocals and stepping on it, just add, you know, 50 milliseconds, 75 milliseconds, something like that, and it can really separate the reverb from the main vocal. Just uh, try it out, you'll see what I mean. The next control is the self-convolution amount, and what this does is convolves the impulse response before the, the, the dry signal is combined with it, which just is, is a bit crazy. Uh, turn it up, see, what, see if it works for you. It can make things sound a little bit more blurred and a little bit more smooth, or it can totally mess them up. Now I'm just going back to the cello. What we have is stretch. So obviously this cathedral is an extremely long sample. Say we wanted it to be a little bit shorter, we can shorten it like this, or we can lengthen it like this. So I'll play it in the middle and I'll experiment with these. You hear how it dies away a lot quicker there, if I lengthen it? The reverb's just going on forever. If I shorten it, it dies away a lot quicker. So it's very, very effective, that. And the next dial is the EQ mix. And you might think, well, there isn't an EQ here. Why? Why? How can you just turn an EQ on and off like this? And what it is, is that here on this tab here, equalizer, this plugin also has an EQ in it, which is one of its strongest assets. What it means is that you can really, really shape this reverb. So if I turn the dry signal all the way down, just the wet signal up, we can adjust this EQ here to get the sort of reverb that we want. All you have to do is just left click and draw whatever EQ curve you want. And if you hold Alt, you can get a really, really smooth curve. So say for instance, I just want to hear the low frequency reverb. Uh, listen in headphones or speakers and you'll hear this. Really spooky. Say I just want the mid frequency reverb. I can just draw a little mid frequency bump like that. And that's a really common technique. It's sort of called the Abbey Road technique, where you roll off the low end, roll off the high end, and it just makes the reverb sit there a little bit nicer. And of course, you can just have some high end reverb like this. And I find that this is just incredibly useful. I tend to roll off a little bit of the low end, and then at around 50 hertz, I sort of come up, and then sometimes I give it a little boost at the top, sometimes I don't. Cello sounds nice with a little bit of a boost. 
And this just means that you can really, really shape the reverb. Most reverbs don't have such an intricate EQ like this. So let's now take a listen to this in the context of a mix and try to blend in the amount that we want. I really think that that smooth cathedral preset just sounds incredible. Let's take a listen to a few uh, different ones. So let's try real spaces, uh, cave chamber. Oh, that's a nice one. And you can see that just by pulling up a few presets, I'm getting some sounds which I don't think I could possibly get with uh, something like Fruity Reverb 2, uh, your simple sort of algorithmic reverb. And this just opens up so many more possibilities for reverbs. For those of you who are more curious, I'm going to quickly show you how to create your own impulse responses from your favorite plugins. So what I'm going to do first is load Fruity Convolver. Uh, I can do this on any channel. In the middle, uh, the next one, I'm going to load one of my favorite reverb plugins, which is the Verb Suite Classics. And then again, I'm going to load another Convolver afterwards. So we end up with this sort of sandwich where we have a Convolver at the top, our favorite reverb, and then another Convolver. What I'm going to do is find my favorite unit, and I love this one that's called Sunset Chamber uh, BM7. Fantastic. Okay, so I've got that there. That's loaded up. Um, and now what I have to do is set the bottom one here into record and it says recording and then at the top I trigger an impulse it's going to go through here and this is going to record the impulse response here we go wait till it dies out I'm done recording now this impulse response here sounds like this that is what the impulse sounds like going through that reverb and now if I were to uh, run my cello through this, it would sound exactly the same as running it through this Verb Suite Classic here. So this is the Verb Suite Classics. And this is the Fruity Convolver of the same reverb. To me, that sounds uh, extraordinarily similar. And although you don't have all of the power of using the original plugin, you know, I can't change uh, all of this stuff here, it really is close enough. And although it's not quite as flexible as the original plugin, if you look online, there are just hundreds of thousands of impulse responses of people who have incredible hardware reverbs or they've gone uh, to incredible acoustic spaces. So if you like, you can just keep adding your own user presets here and just drag in any impulse responses you want into here obviously they've sampled loads and loads here you know lexicons eventides and whatnots but you can just use whatever you want and for those of you that are extremely curious you can actually just drag in any sample so say i have a drum i can just drag and like a crash into there or a kick drum or any sample and it will still convolve my original signal with that so it's incredible for different sound design uh, possibilities so i might actually follow this up with another video but uh, for now Get using this plugin because it is fantastic. It's one that I've neglected use of in the past. And I just think it's a fantastic tool that all of us that use FL Studio have access to for free. And we're probably not making the best of it. So anyway, I hope that's helpful. I hope that you have a great week and I hope to see you in the next video too. Bye for now.